often throughout the years, those of us saying, gun control. Okay, you take away the guns, and what's next? Well, if somebody wants to kill somebody, they'll pick up a knife. Are you going to take away the knives? Yeah, that's what we'll do. This is London's mayor, Mayor Khan, who has implemented an intense new knife control policy to stop the epidemic of stabbings. The police in London now will stop and frisk people they believe to be carrying knives. How will they know that somebody is carrying a knife? It doesn't matter. They can just stop anybody. Hey, you look shady. Hey, I just saw that eye you gave. Are you about to stab somebody? I have to stop and frisk you. An epidemic of stabbings and acid attacks in London has gotten so bad that London Mayor Khan is announcing broad new knife control policies designed to keep these weapons of war. Knives are weapons of war. They're not a utensil. They are a weapon of war. He wants to keep them out of the hands of Londoners looking to cause others harm. So, this tough immediate measure involve, involves an incredible police crackdown, a ban on home deliveries of knives and acid, and expanding law enforcement stop and search power so that police may stop anyone they believe to be a threat or planning a knife or acid attack. Intelligence is gone. Common sense is gone. Are they doing this because they don't want us to have any way to protect ourselves at all? Perhaps. Now, London has very tight gun control. So I guess people are resorting to knives. Do you remember ever a time in your life when... We had these government officials trying to get to the root of a problem. You see, London has recently surpassed the murder rate of New York City. London now has more murders in London than New York City. It's the first time in history. Okay, so we got to take away the knives. We're not going to look at our society. We're not going to get to the root of the problem. We're just going to take away your knives. We're going to ban deliveries of knives. <sighs> okay. Uh, you tell me. Am I crazy? Don't you think we should get to the root of the problem? Frankly, in 59 years, I, I don't know of a time when a problem arose and we Americans tried to get to the root of it. Instead, it's just that quick fix that doesn't fix anything. So, you take away the knives, Mayor Khan, and if somebody wants to do somebody harm or kill them, well, there's so many instruments out there, right? Will they resort to hammers? You gonna take away hammers? You know, hands. Hands can be a weapon of war because people choke people with their hands. Are you gonna take away people's hands? Cars, well, we all know they wanna take away cars, Agenda 2030, but cars, people driving into shopping areas, killing people, take away the cars. And Wire, wire around somebody's neck can kill them. Ban wire. Let's never, ever look at what is happening that is causing this. Let's just take away, one at a time, every instrument, instrument that could hurt somebody or murder somebody. A baseball bat, get rid of it. Sledgehammers, get rid of them. Jesus. Wow. And you know what, guys? This, um, this problem that we are having, it's not going to get better. Look at the generations that are 
growing up, now we all know that every generation has been subjected to an education system that was worse than the last and Common Core, Common Core has literally just gutted American history. They being taught to be good global citizens. You ask millennials, many of them don't even know what the Bill of Rights is. They couldn't tell you what any of the rights are. So here, four in ten millennials don't know not only that six million Jews were killed in the Holocaust, but there are 22 percent haven't heard of or aren't sure if they've heard of the Holocaust. And a bird is singing outside my window. And it is 12.24 a.m. Now, don't leave the comments. The Holocaust, you know, Jews didn't die, there was no Holocaust. That's not the point. The point is, they are erasing history. And history is important. Because <laughs> you're never on the same page with any of your fellow citizens that you're living with if you're all taught different things. Now, again, there is quite a lot of evidence about the Holocaust, but the Holocaust itself did happen. I've known Holocaust survivors. And no, they weren't lying. Swarm of killer bees taking over a home in Far East El Paso, and the owner can't afford removal, and a neighbor is asking for help for anybody who can remove these bees and then uh, renovate the wall. So here in this article it says 60,000 killer bees are on one property in the roof of the Murphy's home. They're an elderly couple and the removal of the bees is expensive and then they have to get a contractor to rebuild the wall and the roof. Now, 60,000 killer bees have jumped to 1 million. Okay, 1 million killer bees are threatening an entire neighborhood in Far East El Paso. They're aggressive bees, 20 to 30 times more aggressive than honeybees. And they're Africanized. What does that mean? Africanized bees, they're living in the walls and the roof of this house. Um, and the, the couple, they can't go outside. They can't walk on the side of their home. They can't enjoy a nice patio because these bees will attack. Do you hear that bird? I can't, I don't have, I can't put the microphone to the window. <laughs> All right. Um, the birds have been singing at night, two o'clock in the morning, a couple of nights ago. So incredibly loud for about an hour and a half. All right. Um, well, Africanized bees. Hmm. These are African and European bees that have come together and they clearly are able to do that multiculturalism thing better than humans because they have created the Africanized bee. They're hybrids. 
but they've become extremely aggressive. So, um, how did they get here? But this neighborhood is under a big threat. All right. Oh, let's just listen to this. As many as 60 different bacterial colonies can be blown out of the machines in just one 30-second drive. This is not good. It's all we have in some restaurants. I don't even know what to do what? anymore. What? If you want to investigate what? further. What? What is this? A study has found a dirty little secret about hand dryers found in many public restrooms. They are sucking up feces particles and spraying them onto your hands. In fact, as many as 60 different bacterial colonies can be blown out of the machines in just one 30-second drive. This is All right. We've had these things for decades. And this is now just coming out, this information. It's blowing feces on you. Great. Well, I'm so happy that I hardly... I, I I can think maybe I've used those things three, four times. I can't stand them. They don't really work. But they're sucking up feces. Are you kidding me? I don't know what to say. Naked man tased and arrested after attacking people at DC Metro Station. Was he targeted? Okay. All right, um, a naked man apparently was mugging people and trying to rob them, threatening them. They can do this to individuals with the frequencies. They can actually target an individual and get that individual to behave just like this man did. So, be really grateful that that hasn't happened to you yet. I mean, targeting, think about it. They can get any of us to do exactly that. Or, how about this? Um, a man walked into a McDonald's, ordered 30 double cheeseburgers, and his order was refused, and so... He got really angry and he started ripping up a banner in McDonald's and then he and then he went for the golden arches. He was trying to destroy the golden arches. Do we have a lot of people that are crazy? Yeah, we do. Mom who let four year old eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a shopping cart branded a monster by a parenting forum. Okay. A four-year-old eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich in a shopping cart in Target. Okay. So, apparently somebody came up to her in Target and I can't seem to get my scrolling working. Okay. Um, She was kind of attacked by another woman who stopped her in Target and lectured her about peanut allergies. So she posted a comment. Is it okay to let your child eat peanut butter at Target? And she wanted to know she wanted to hear from other moms. Um, Urban Baby was the parenting forum. She got so attacked. So now it's unacceptable to have your child eat peanut butter in public. It's an anti-peanut butter backlash. And it was swift and brutal. Most responses attacked mother, mother for potentially endangering children with peanut allergies. And some criticized her for feeding her daughter in a shopping cart, which they considered disgusting. That's really inconsiderate. So many kids have life-threatening allergies to peanut butter. Eating in a shopping cart guarantees it will be smeared on the handle. 
It's really awful. You, why can't I get this working? Wow. Okay, let's try that again. No, I can't scroll down. Okay. All right. So, um, it's really awful. You would do this, sorry, but imagine if it were your child with the allergy. Another mother. That's exactly, that's actually kind of lousy of you. You are aware that kids with peanut allergies exist in the world, so it's kind of a de-move to let your kids smear peanut butter all over the child seat of a public cart. How unbelievably presumptuous of this woman to write that. The mother said there was no peanut butter. My child doesn't smear peanut butter all over the cart. Okay, so this mother, that's the presumption that people make. They fabricate facts in their head and then they get angry about it. Like you don't even have to exist. They can just do it all on their own. God, I can't stand that. It drives me nuts. All right. Um, so the mother said there was no peanut butter on the cart at all. But some of the other comments. Your total disdain for the safety of other, of other children, other kids, is awful. Feeding your kid peanut butter and jelly in a Target shopping cart, it's the epitome of lowbrow. For the love of God, at least feed her in the car if you absolutely can't feed her at home. Everything about your post is vile. Woof! You're the worst kind of person. This is another comment. You're the worst kind of person. Just understand that raising a child... I'm recording that bird. Do you hear it? It's quite loud. Anyway, um, you're the worst kind of person. Just understand that raising a child with an I don't care about others attitude means they will be obnoxious and sufferable kids just like their mom, a grown up would tell their kids, we can't eat that right now because it may cause another child to get sick, period. Why do we need to explain this to you? Another one. It's not impossible to feed your child before or after putting them in a shopping cart, especially peanut butter. You're awful. Another one. So gross. You packed a peanut butter and jelly for your kid to eat at Target. There's so much wrong with this. It needs to be fake. Oh, God. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Uh, you think uh, we need to discuss parenting? I don't know. Uh, that seems to be a taboo subject still. That needs to be, that taboo, it needs to be shattered. Because people are out of their friggin' minds. Another one. I hope no child dies because of any residual peanuts on the cart. All right, if you have a child who has a peanut allergy and it is that lethal, then it is your job to protect that child. So, there's an awful lot of people out there and apparently this mother is not one of them. Her child didn't smear peanut butter all over the cart. But there are a lot of people out there that are inconsiderate and they don't give a shit about anybody and they do whatever the hell they want to do. Okay, that being known, parents need to protect their children. Parents with any kind of lethal allergy and whatever they are allergic to, if that is a common substance out in public, then it's your job to protect your child. So, you go into Target, you look at the shopping cart, and you look to see, are there any peanut butter smears? And if there are, you don't take that cart, or you wipe that peanut butter off. Don't you have to ingest the peanut in order for it to be lethal? 
I think you do. Okay. Um, you, look, you guys who are mothers, you can chime in. Uh, I think that a lot of these people who were commenting like this are, you know, they're like the mothers with people who don't vaccinate their children. Um, or the, the mothers who do vaccinate and then attack those who don't vaccinate. It's insane. It is so utterly controlling. And a four-year-old child eating a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, that was rather acceptable years ago. So now it's like, you know, the, the hatred, the spewing of hatred. Jesus, the, the mother of this child who ate the peanut butter and jelly sandwich simply just asked a question um, and then just got hit with vile hatred. So what is going on with our societies? People are really... I, I, and I think, you know, I try to figure out what the hell is going on. Okay, we've got these frequencies that are causing an awful lot of stress internally um, and causing people to kind of lose their minds. But even if we didn't have that and everything else remained the same, there clearly is something very obviously wrong here in this country. Those who still are choosing willful ignorance, they don't want to know. They don't want to know. I mean, I had people, friends who were older than me, they were like 60, 57, said to me, what you want to talk about is scary. Scary? I thought we were adults. I thought we could handle the scary stuff. Okay. We've got an awful lot of people who live fear. It's, fear is a constant in their life. Even the willfully ignorant who shut you up, they don't want to hear, they want to live in a fantasy land, they know something's very wrong. And in their subconscious, that's where it is. And stress causes people to act in ways that they wouldn't act ordinarily. I just saw this notification, woman fighting release of GMO mosquitoes found dead in hotel pool. Jesus. Yep. I have periods during the day that the computer acts like this and then it just reverts back. So yeah, people can act. It, it, look, stress causes regression in people and they begin to act in very uncivilized manners. I've, I've been there. I've been so stressed out. And then having to face somebody that is treating me in a way that is really kind of pushing the limit on crazy or lying or doing any of that stuff, wow, have I lost it in terms of just really letting loose my anger. Not in a physical way, but hell, I will admit my anger. You know, it's not an irrational anger because it's related to something. It's not just, you know, flying off the handle for something that I've conjured up. Something's happening and it shouldn't be happening. And when that something is obvious, I can really, you know, my... I can let loose an awful lot of words that, oh. yeah, well, and 
I hate it. I understand it, but it's not an excuse. I know where it's coming from, but it's not an excuse. So this is a time, you know, when we have people behaving in ways that really you know that they shouldn't be behaving this way. Um, people who are adults who begin to act with such incredible immaturity. When this kind of stuff happens more and more, when it becomes almost just standard acceptable behavior, it is very hard. Very hard to just stay kind of grounded and firm and if you're not stressed out and everything you can just walk away from it and a long time opponent of gen genetically engineered mosquitoes was found dead in Washington Hotel as she prepared to present a petition with over 200,000 signatures to the EPA. Mila Demir, Demir a 45-year-old activist from Key West, Florida. She opposed the release of genetically engineered mosquitoes found dead in the swimming pool. Jesus. I'll link below to all. To all articles, I mean, it's... Yeah. None of this is going to get any better. It's only going to get worse. It's going to become more and more obvious that something is seriously wrong. The crimes committed, people murdered, the corruption and the crime in government. It doesn't need to become more obvious. It is now obvious. So when we are facing so many Americans who don't care, who just want to live their self-centered lives, who do nothing, who then call you names, claiming that you're crazy, it will be a real challenge for all of us to maintain our sanity. In the days preceding her death, she posted on Facebook, her Facebook page, about the fight against genetically engineered mosquitoes. The time is now. Please sign and share. We are not guinea pigs. Is time to set standards when it comes to people and bio. It's time to set standards when it comes to people and biotechnology. An activist post spoke with her friend Barbara Napoles, I don't know, a fellow activist and long-term friend who accompanied her on the trip to Washington DC. One of the last people to see her alive. She worked with Demir for years as part of the Never Again Foundation, an organization that focused on a variety of environmental causes. <sighs> Jesus. So the two headed to Washington on Sunday, arrived on Monday, and planned to deliver their petition on Tuesday to the EPA. Around 8.45 a.m. Tuesday morning, Demir left Nepal's to go for a quick swim at the hotel's rooftop pool before heading to the EPA and that was the last time Nepal saw her alive. Regarding the possibility of death by accidental drowning, Nepal said Mila Demir was not known to be a weak swimmer and had swum with whale sharks in the past. She had plans to go swimming with dolphins in June. She wanted the people of Houston to have time to comment on the release of genetically engineered mosquitoes, which they will be releasing. And I'm sure the police are going to conclude immediately 
she drowned. Accidental drowning.